The transfer portal is getting crazier and crazier. It's pretty much at the point where it doesn't even matter what your recruiting class looks like anymore. What matters is how your transfer class looks. Yesterday, I posted a video talking about the five teams that killed it in the transfer portal. Well, it wasn't just five teams that had a great offseason. Here are five more teams that killed it in the transfer portal this offseason. Before we get to today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds Odds are you love college football, and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel, so make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. Although they didn't add too many pieces, you can make the case that Ohio State added the best talent this offseason. They added probably the best running back in the nation in former Ole Miss running back Quinshawn Judkins. Over the last two seasons with the Rebels, he's emerged as one of the top running backs in all of college football. Over the last two years, he's ran for over 2,700 yards with 31 rushing touchdowns. He's also caught 37 passes for 300 yards and his three receiving touchdowns. They also added arguably the best defensive player that was in the portal in former Alabama cornerback Caleb Downs. Last season as a freshman for the Tide, Downs had over 100 tackles. He also had two interceptions, four pass breakups, a fumble recovery, and a forced fumble. Right there, those are probably the two biggest additions any team made in the portal this offseason. They also added their likely starting quarterback in Kansas State quarterback Will Howard. Last year for the Wildcats, he threw for 2,700 yards and had 24 passing touchdowns. Touchdowns. He also added 350 yards on the ground with 9 rushing scores. Personally, I'm not a huge Will Howard fan, but a lot of people out there think he's going to be a really good quarterback for the Buckeyes. Ohio State also added former Alabama center Seth McLaughlin. He started all 14 games for Alabama in 2023 and his 25 starts over his collegiate career. He was rated as one of the top interior offensive linemen in the portal this offseason and had a 4-star rating in the 24-7 sports transfer rankings. The final notable addition for Ohio State was former Alabama quarterback Julian Sayan. He was ESPN's top quarterback recruit for the 2024 class. He is ESPN's number 3 overall recruit for the class of 2024 and the top offensive recruit in his class. And if I were to guess, he'll be the favorite to be their starting quarterback in 2025. Up next, we have Oklahoma, and we'll start on defense. They added former San Diego State cornerback Des Malone. Over the last two seasons, he has 90 tackles, 4 interceptions, and 12 pass breakups. Former Miami of Ohio edge rusher Caden Woolard is coming off a career year. Last season, he had 41 tackles with 12 and a half tackles for loss and nine and a half sacks. Their final piece on defense was former TCU defensive tackle Dominic Williams. Over the last two seasons for the Horn Frogs, he's totaled 60 tackles, nine and a half tackles for loss, and four and a half sacks. On offense, the biggest piece they added was former UT Martin running back Sam Franklin. This past season, he ran for nearly 1,400 yards and had 11 rushing touchdowns. Over the last two seasons, he has over 2,000 rushing yards with 19 rushing scores. An interesting addition is former Southeastern Louisiana tight end Bauer Sharp. Last season, he caught 29 passes for 300 yards and had 3 touchdowns, but he also did a lot of damage on the ground as well. He ran for nearly 150 yards and had 5 rushing touchdowns. Another tight end they added was former Baylor and North Texas tight end Jake Roberts. Over his career, he has 66 receptions for nearly 800 yards and 4 receiving touchdowns. Oklahoma also added former Purdue wide receiver Deion Burks. Last season, he caught 50 passes for over 600 yards and had 7 receiving touchdowns. Although Oklahoma already has their starting quarterback in Jackson Arnold, it's really good to have depth. And they brought in veteran quarterback Casey Thompson. This is going to be a 6th season and a fourth different program over the last four years. Overall, during his collegiate career, he has 62 career touchdowns under his belt. Up next, we have Oregon, who added arguably the best quarterback in the portal this offseason with Dylan Gabriel. After spending the last couple of seasons with Oklahoma, Gabriel comes over to Oregon for his final season. Over the course of his collegiate career, he's thrown for nearly 15,000 yards and has 125 passing touchdowns. He's also added over 1,000 yards on the ground with 26 rushing scores as well. And he wasn't the only quarterback that the Ducks added, as they brought in UCLA quarterback Dante Moore, who was one of the top quarterback recruits of his class. He started a handful of games this past season for UCLA, but he heads to Oregon, where he'll likely be the starting quarterback in 2025. The Ducks added one of the top wide receivers in the portal in former Texas A&M wide receiver Evan Stewart. 
Over the last two seasons for the Aggies, he's caught 91 passes for 1,200 yards with six receiving touchdowns. Coming over from Northwestern Missouri State is running back Jay Harris. He was a Division II first team All-American as a sophomore as he ran for over 1,400 yards and had 14 rushing touchdowns. He was the only running back in the nation to rush for more than 100 yards in all games that he played. On defense, the Ducks added former Kansas State safety Kobe Savage. Over the last two seasons for the Wildcats, he's racked up 115 tackles with 6.5 tackles for loss and 6 interceptions. Former UTSA cornerback Cameron Alexander was one of the most disruptive defensive backs in all of college football last year. He had 34 tackles and 2 interceptions, but had 15 pass breakups that led the American Conference. Speaking of disruptive cornerbacks, former Washington cornerback Jabbar Muhammad was just as good, if not better. Last season for the Huskies, he had 46 tackles, 5 tackles for loss, 3 interceptions, and 16 pass breakups. He ranked first in the Pac-12 and third in the entire country in pass breakups. Another cornerback they added was Brandon Johnson from Duke. Over the last two seasons, Johnson has over 100 tackles with 16 tackles for loss and 7 sacks. He also has 2 interceptions, 2 forced fumbles, 3 fumble recoveries, and 11 pass breakups. The final piece that Oregon added was former 4-star safety Peyton Woodyard. He was originally committed to Alabama, but he flipped his commitment to Oregon. Up next, we have Miami. We'll start at quarterback as they brought in one of the top quarterbacks that was available in the portal. Cameron Ward comes over from Washington State after a couple of really strong seasons. Over the last two years, he threw for 7,000 yards and had 48 passing touchdowns. They added another great offensive weapon from the Pac-12, this one being former Oregon State running back Damian Martinez. Over the last two seasons, he's ran for nearly 2,200 yards and has 16 rushing touchdowns, and he was considered to be one of the top running backs that entered the portal this offseason. Miami also added wide receiver Sam Brown, who has spent time at West Virginia and at Houston. Over the last two seasons with the Cougars, Brown caught over 100 passes for 1,300 yards and 7 touchdowns. Heading over to defense is former Middle Tennessee State defensive lineman Marley Cook. During his time there, he had 60 tackles, with 19 coming for loss and 10.5 sacks. Defensive lineman Elijah Alston spent the last four seasons at Marshall. During his time with the Herd, he had over 100 tackles, with 19.5 coming for loss and 10 sacks. He also added four pass breakups and had four forced fumbles. Washington safety Michael Powell had 100 tackles with the Huskies. He had three interceptions, one of which was returned for a touchdown. He also had nine pass breakups and a forced fumble. Miami had another player that came over from Marshall. Marshall in cornerback Deyani Hill. Last season, he had 55 tackles with an interception, a forced fumble, and 10 pass breakups. Their final piece on defense was former Michigan State defensive lineman Simeon Barrow. During his time with the Spartans, he had 110 tackles, 18.5 tackles for loss, 10 sacks, and 2 forced fumbles. The final team on our list today is Auburn. They improved their wide receiver room by adding former Penn State wide receiver Keandre Lambert-Smith. During his time with the Nittany Lions, he caught 126 passes for 1,700 yards and 11 touchdowns. They also brought in former Georgia State wide receiver Robert Lewis. This past season, he caught 70 passes for 900 yards and 7 scores. Flipping over to defense, the best defensive player that Auburn picked up was former Texas safety Jaron Thompson. During his time with the Longhorns, he totaled 176 tackles with 4 coming for loss. He had 5 interceptions and 18 pass breakups. Former Duke linebacker Dorian Mousey has appeared in 43 games over the last 4 seasons. He has nearly 200 tackles to his resume with 9.5 tackles for loss, an interception, a forced fumble, and 3 pass breakups. After spending 3 seasons at Texas Tech, edge rusher Philip Blighty spent last year at Indiana. Over his career, he has a very nice 69 tackles with 10.5 half coming for loss. Former Arkansas State defensive end Carrion Crawford was great last season. He had 10 and a half tackles for loss, 5 and a half sacks, with 2 forced fumbles, 2 fumble recoveries, and a pass breakup. Well, that wraps it up for today's video. Which school do you think did the best in the transfer portal this offseason? Whoever you think it is, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, was there a team who killed it that wasn't included in today's video? If you think there's a team who had a really good transfer class this offseason and they need to be talked about, drop a comment below and I'll feature them in my next video.
Before you leave, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. I'm posting college football videos all off season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video and my channel with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.